What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, it's going to be kind of a different video. You guys know that I'm currently waiting on the status of the M5 and currently for the 135, we're just waiting to get the papers in the mail. So in the meantime, I decided to answer you guys' biggest question. And a lot of you guys always ask me, how do I always get good deals or at least for the most part, get some pretty good deals on some cars? And like I mentioned on that 335 video, it's important to go look at the cars and don't just, you know, send an offer over text or over a phone call. Go look at the cars and you might be able to negotiate more or you might be able to at least know whether that car was a good or a bad idea. It's worth spending that five to ten dollars on gas and a little bit of time. So right now we're gonna be taking guys to Copart of Sacramento and they have this M235 that is an absolute dream spec. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys on my journey and just, you know, let's just go see this car. Is it worth the money? Me personally, I don't think it's a build for me unless it goes for a super, super, super good price. I'm obviously gonna bid on it, but I mean, I usually bid on a lot of cars and if the car, if it's not within like a price range of a car that I really want, then I wouldn't bid on it. For example, this isn't a car I'm trying to get right now, but for the right price, why not? It's a beautiful car, but right now my goal on the channel is to do an M collection. The M235i does have the M symbol, but it's not a, it's not a real M car. So let's go ahead and take you guys on this journey, head down to Copart of Sacramento. Just got to Copart. Looks like the wait time is about 37 minutes. Not too shabby. Just hopefully this is a legit 37 minutes. I'll check back to you guys once we're actually inside. Alright guys, so we just got out of Copart and it doesn't look too good at all. Like, I don't even know how somebody has the time. That kind of vandalism work seems like that that person that was vandalizing the car had plenty of time and was not scared of the authority or whatever the case is because literally every little piece of the car that has any sense of value is destroyed. Like literally the center console, the dashboard, every single door, every single dash, like door panel in the car has like a slit through it. The seats have X's, even the headdress. I mean, come on, these have value in them and they still have X's on these, X's on the seats, every little piece in the rear. Even this thing had like five cuts into it. The windshield was destroyed. One of the headlights was destroyed. And when you guys look in the photos, you really don't notice that the headlight was actually destroyed. You don't really notice the interior was destroyed. You never see the, the roof has X's on the roof all over the interior is completely destroyed and we couldn't even get the car to start there was an Instagram on the car I'm gonna be blurring it out because uh, obviously we don't want any of that information going out but I'm gonna be reaching out to him and see why the car doesn't start maybe he has a little bit more information to it maybe it's worth getting still but at the end of the day I don't even think honestly it's worth spending over four grand for that car just because damages are roughly around six thousand dollars at like a budget cost insurance is probably probably saying this is this is like thirty thousand forty thousand dollars because 
every piece of the exterior as well was either keyed, which you didn't see in the photos, or dented in, which you did see on the photos, and there was everywhere. On the roof, there was engraving. On the hood, there was engraving. Every little piece of the car. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get home and just get some quotes and just pretty much show you guys what I pretty much do when I find a car like this, and I try to see whether it's worth saving or just not worth the money, nor the time. And guys, we are officially home, and I pretty much, uh, I, I did this all behind the scenes. I don't think I want to sit with you guys and pretty much show you guys the whole full price breakdown. But basically, yes, guys, this is important to do, and I don't always do it on paper. I think this is the second time I've ever done it on paper, and both times we're on video for you guys. I typically just do a little bit of research, and I do pretty much the math in my head, and if I see a lot of things are just a lot of money, I really just start to reconsider the car. Um, this is something that I didn't do with the 7 Series. I didn't factor in the transmission thing, I didn't factor in a bunch of other things. I just wanted the car for content, plus I really wanted an oversized sedan. Never had one before, it's kind of like an SUV, but it's a sedan at the same time. Kind of a big spacious car, very comfortable to drive, and I think that's what ended up selling me on it. I was like, for $3,000, such a nice, comfortable car, but I really didn't factor in how bad the car was actually, condition-wise, how bad it was. If you guys want me to get out a video, literally every everything I replaced on the 7 series, let me know down below because I probably spent well over like eight or nine thousand dollars on that car and you know I ended up selling for pretty much half just because the value in the car is just not there. But anyhow, back to the list. So when we would check out the M235, I looked at that car and I was like wow, okay, whoever that vandalized this car, it had like the FU all over it, a bunch of other things all over the car. Um, it, it just looked like a lot, either a lot of hatred or an inside job, one or the other. I don't know anything about it, but it's fine from a personal experience. Looks like either an inside job, just because of how much damage it is. Like, who has time to key the the roof? Like, like who does that stuff? Who keys each? individual panel and each individual thing it's like you're trying to count up how much money uh, you know you can you can have the option pay you out for that's just my personal opinion and I've seen videos on YouTube where in some cases the, the the person that's vandalizing the car is aware the owner is around them but they just don't care they're just arguing and they're just keying the whole car so I really don't know what the situation is like but for me personally as soon as I went to go look at it I was like, it's a nice car, very nice car, but too, too, too damaged to be worth repairing. And let me get into that for you guys real quick. Let's just start off with the main thing. The main thing was we couldn't get the car to start. So it has 140,000 miles, and we tried putting the foot on the brake, starting the car, the key was in the glove box, and the car would not start. So that was kind of concerning. Now, it could just be a starter, but I've never seen N55s from the F chassis have starter issues. It could be something much more than that. It could be just, it could be a seized motor, because like literally, it would not crank, it would not do anything. But again, it could be a starter, could be a seized motor, 50-50. Especially cars at auction, you know, you never really know. And I try to like think of it like, okay, so if it was vandalized, if it was an inside job, why was it vandalized? It wouldn't be vandalized over a starter. A nice $20,000 car would not be vandalized over a starter, but it could be vandalized for something that is much, much worse. And this is just me just thinking. Again, I don't know. I don't know the story about the car. This is just me making my assumptions to make me think about whether this purchase is worth it for me or not. So the first thing I did, obviously, was just going around the car and just looking at every single piece of damage that I could find on it. That's something that everyone should do. Don't actually feel emotionally attached to a car. Sometimes I, it even happens to me. I look at a car, I'm like, I had it in my plan. I had a whole plan of this car before I went to go look at it, and I was like, I want it. I'm just gonna make it work. The problem is, if I would have made this work, you guys are gonna see the price in the end. It's just crazy. So first things first, like I said, we don't know much about the engine. This engine's a very expensive engine. It's roughly worth about like six thousand dollars. So uh, I couldn't even find one on like for sale on eBay. I found like one for like seven thousand. I found one for five thousand. Um, and you know those are kind of crazy prices. But I mean I can't find anything else on the market right now. So I have to go with those prices for now. I'm sure you could probably find one for like four thousand. Um, but I mean still it's very 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 expensive motor. And uh, not to mention that's what, that's just the parts. That's not parts and labor doing all this other preventative maintenance while the engine is out and you're replacing the whole motor. The next thing I, I noticed that in the pictures I didn't notice that the driver's head light was completely cracked. It, it looked like it was functioning in the photos. It looked perfectly fine in the photos, but actually the whole glass piece of it is completely off crack and you know, just getting a new headlight. On eBay, the cheapest one I found was $645 complete. The next thing I noticed was the passenger taillight for $150. Then I noticed both fenders were pretty much dented in. Now you probably could pull out the dents or but something that you know. 
Now you probably could pull out the dents and then put Bondo over, but I'm just gonna be saying it as if we're not doing Bondo. We're just gonna be buying panels and repainting it and only doing Bondo or like, you know, like repairing damaged spots that it's, you know, it's very expensive to replace like quarter panels, um, the roof, stuff like that. So each fender I found was $250, and then uh, basically to paint it was another $200 a panel. So in total, it'd be $900 there. So for the hood, I just figured if I was to buy this car, I'd probably get a GTS hood because I mean the GTS hoods are almost the same exact price as the OEM hoods. So I'm roughly estimating about $1,000 all set in stone on a hood. The trunk, I've been finding it at AutoGate and a few other places for like $400 with paint, it'll be about $600. And I'm just gonna go down this pretty quickly. So. The front and rear bumper, they were both pretty much damaged, but they both can be repairable. So I said $400 switches for paint and bodywork. Quarter panels, I said $500 for bodywork and paint. The roof, again, bodywork and paint, very scuffed up to the sand, the whole roof down, and then uh, pretty much repainted off, again, $400. Passenger rear glass, so this is the passenger side rear quarter glass. I'd say about a hundred dollars there. And then the full interior, I did a full pr pr price breakdown because I couldn't find the full interior anywhere. It is a red interior, very, very, very desired interior, and uh, it's kind of hard to find. So I found on Autogative that you have some of the parts, but not everything. For example, like the driver's seat, I couldn't find it anywhere. But uh, they did have the passenger seat for sale for 300, and typically driver's seats go for a little more than that. So I said 400, rough guess for how much the driver's seat is gonna be, 300 for passenger, 200 for the rears, 100 for one of the door panels, and then, uh, yeah, 155 for the other one, and then the rear two are 150 each. So in total, the full interior to just swap out the seats and the door panels, oh yeah, and the center console was 75 bucks, and in total, it'll be 1530, so 1530 just for the interior. And like I said, when I got into the car too, I noticed that the roof, the sun visors, all that stuff was messed up as well. So the roof had X's all over it, and the sun visors was just, again, X cut straight through it. So the whole full roof, um, was about $585, and the sun visors for both of them was only 70 bucks, not a big deal, but again, still a cost. Also, what I noticed that the driver's door mirror was completely destroyed, that was about $300, and then both doors, I noticed, had some major dents, so that was about probably with repair and paint, I'm estimating about $500 there. Now we're coming down to just some glass things, like uh, the driver's door glass was completely busted, I found one for $112, so that was, a, that was a pretty good deal for, honestly, a driver's door window, because typically driver doors windows are the ones that typically get broken so those are typically sell a lot more than any other window in the car other than the windshield of course because the windshield was $500 that's a very expensive piece and then I put miscellaneous about another $500 because you never know you really never know uh, you know what other things you're gonna find when you're starting to take things apart and be like oh that's broken too oh that's scratched up too you like you you know I went over there and I had about five minutes to look through the car and that's everything that I could remember that I actually visually saw and that's me going through the video that I recorded for you guys as well so then I pretty much marked down the total so the total um, that I pretty much had right here. I mean, people can do this on Excel and stuff. I already did it on a paper. That's mainly because, like, like, for me, I like to do quickly, just, you know, do all the math and then just, just say it to you guys. So in total, just the repairs, if I, if we don't have an engine issue, something simple, and that's assuming that we don't find any more miscellaneous things, which is I put the $500 for miscellaneous, 6,000 for the motor, it'll be $8,292 for just what we see that we know we have to spend to fix. And again, that's not getting the car to start because we don't know what's up with that either. And assuming we win the car for 6,000, it's gonna be roughly, roughly 14,000 $292. Now that's assuming we win it for $6,000. Um, and if we finish all set in stone, $14,292. And that's also assuming that the engine's good. Um, so this is all assumptions, best comes to best. Uh, we'll get the car for $14,292. Now honestly, that price is not terrible. That's not at, like that's not terrible because $14,292 for an M Sport uh, M235i is a, and a red on blue exterior. That's a pretty nice, desirable spec. But the only issue is that it's 140,000 miles and it's salvage title. So probably it's only worth that much if it comes time to sell it because clean titles are going for around $20,000 with that kind of mileage. I think even less, maybe $19,000 with 140,000 miles. Kind of super high mileage. Now worst comes to worst, the engine's blown hypothetically, or some other engine damage has occurred, because again, high mileage, you can just assume that as a worst comes to worst. And assuming that he's only letting us buy the car at his asking price, or like somewhere around his asking price of $8,600, I'm assuming they're gonna be pretty firm on that just because it is very cheap for that car, it's just the damage is very bad. So assuming the car engine's bad, miscellaneous things, we find some more things, it's gonna be $14,792 just in repairs. 
and then let alone buying the car for $8,600 in total, it's gonna be $23,392. So this is when like you buy the car and you like, you really, really, really want it, but then you realize all these damages, is it worth it? You can't even part out the car because everything that has value in it is destroyed. So it really sucks to like, that when you're going into a project like this, you better be like fully content that like, you know, you're in it for the project, you're in it for the build because you, there's just probably gonna be no profit in this car whatsoever. And I don't like looking at cars like that, but I mean, at the same time, when you're when you're building cars and you're trying to have fun, at the end of the day, you don't wanna be losing money. You still wanna be like, you know, at the same time, like you made a good deal and you enjoyed your car and whatnot. And uh, what's the point of going through an entire build? And you know, maybe to some people like myself, it's fun. Like I enjoy doing builds. But if you're gonna be losing more money doing a build and just going to buy it like fully, you know, clean title or whatever, and you can just go start modifying it, like it's not worth the hassle, if you guys know what I mean. So again, 22,392, worst comes to worst, but then, okay, so let's just say he lets us buy the asking price, which is 8,600, and then the engine's good. So the total will be $17,392. That's, again, the numbers I got, um, that's excluding uh, copart fees, broker fees, taxes, and registration. All those numbers are excluding that. So again, very, very, very high numbers for a car that's selling for very, very, very cheap. Um, very beautiful car. I love that car. Be a great daily, be a great, you know, just thing to just have on the channel. Uh, something I just kind of wanted to like have on the side project or whatever. But at the same time, it's just not worth it from the extent of the damages. Let me know if you guys want me to make more videos like this. In the meantime, I am legitimately just waiting on the news for the M5, and I'm looking currently for another M build, possibly a track build, possibly a collector's car, because I want to start an M collection. So I'm looking out for a few more other cars, and uh, the 135, you're still waiting on the pink slip. So I'll keep you guys posted with everything that I know, but if you guys want me to do more breakdown videos and just go look at more cars and show you guys whether it's a good purchase or not a good purchase, end up even buying a car, throughout that process because if I find a good deal, a good deal is a good deal. Whether I do that off camera or with you guys, a good deal is a good deal. And it's definitely worth mentioning if you guys want me to show you guys every single car I purchase. Because there's some cars that I buy that you guys never end up seeing just because I buy it on like Craigslist and then you know I just end up getting rid of it the next day because it's such a good deal but there's no point in terms of content because you guys have seen the car many times before. But yeah guys, that pretty much concludes the video. I love y'all so much. If you guys are excited for the M5 news, make sure to smash the like button. As soon as I know, you guys will know. And if you guys want more, more videos like this, make sure to smash the like button. Let me know down below what kind of cars you guys want me to go check out and what kind of cars you guys want me to get as a track build. I'm still looking at a lot of you guys told me an E36 M3, a lot of you guys told me an E46 M3, and a couple of you guys just to get an E36, just a regular E36, and it's gonna be a great, great drift car. And uh, some of you guys are just saying X5, like not a drift build, but get an X5. So. Uh, I see what you guys want. I'm actually looking between those four exact cars. So whatever I can find a good deal at, we're gonna go ahead and snag that and probably start some kind of really fun track build. We finally have the truck so we can finally tow our car down the tracks and enjoy it. Without further ado, you guys, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Yeah, yeah, let's go. I ain't the first with the curse, with the thirst that I wanna be better, not worse. Man, it hurts. I'm on this earth with my words, and I put them all together in cert, cause I wanna have words.